Hello everyone, today we're gonna talk about patch 512, which has, I think, the most insane amount of changes in Varen that we have seen since almost the release of the game, after beta, when there was still changes, a lot of changes. So there's a lot of stuff that we have to go through. So let's just dig in. But before we dig in, this video is brought to you by Elgato and it's Stream Deck Plus, the new one with dials. Anyway, hashtag sellout. All right, let's go to the patch notes themselves. They are not yet on official website. They're only on the Reddit Valorant PBE, but it's posted by Riot, so we know it's official. Agent updates. First and foremost, we've increased the point of uh, the point cost of agent ultimates that have large side-wide footprints. For example, Breach Fate, right? We've also made a tuning pass on agents' ability economy. Damage over time areas are also going to be changed and so on. So we first go into the Breach. Breach, his ult is getting nerfed from 7 to 8. You're going to see a trend as explained by the devs here in the first paragraph that all the big area ultimates are going to be costing 8 from now on. This has an overarching result that we're going to talk about later in this video. But in general, this will create a very weird dynamic between duelists and other roles, support roles, for solo queue and ranked. For pro play, those are great because they will make those ultimates happen less often and will be more meaningful. For pro play, all of those changes that we're going to see here are actually aimed for pro play, which... I guess the game should be aiming for because it's an esports game. It's it's not a casual game. It was created in mind of the desk as an esports title. So every change that we have here is gonna be tailored more for the pro players. When it comes to the chamber, we spoke a lot about chamber in general. He was totally out of place, and he's gonna still be good. Right? I'm not going to talk about every single change that happened with Chamber because we already had a video on that on TikTok. You can check it out as well. But there's one thing that not many people realize that with the change of his rendezvous, now he's able to be actually more aggressive on attack and defense than he was previously before. Because he's going to have only one anchor with the TP, right? And that one, one anchor, when it comes to when it comes to like just creating space, you're able to run forward with that zone of your TP further, further into the site than before. And that creates a very weird dynamic because for example, when we're gonna have uh, for let's say, uh, maybe ascend on main, right? Actually, let's maybe, let's maybe pick it up a little bit. Valaplant, let's go to Valaplant. Let's talk a little bit about Ascent. Now Chamber, if he wants to put on a TP, as you can see, the range is not really that big. You're able to go onto lane, but that's about it. You can put like one TP here, the second TP here, and you can essentially peek onto lane and TP back. But with the new TP, you're going to be able to put it somewhere in the middle here, for example like this and it will affect a wider area around probably this much and you're going to be able to push out much further maybe we have to test it out when it's going to be in the game but maybe you'll be going to be even even able to go to button close it right and then tp back to b main so you will be able to carve more space as an attacker on a chamber which I think is, I don't think this is something that the devs wanted in the first place, but that's going to be the result. So essentially, Chamber on Attack will become like a more area-constrained Reyna, but without the pre prerequisite that she needs to kill someone, which is insane value. And we're going to most likely see a meta change of movement of chambers because if they're going to be like playing like very aggressively, they're going to be able to just wide swing through any corner or any smoke, preferably with a flash from, from, from your teammates or something, right? But you're going to create a lot of space by just wide swinging because you can just run in, probably not get killed, TP out instantly. And that's it. So there's, there's, there's a lot of changes that maybe are not yet thought through um, and we'll see how they will affect the prop play and ranked as well. 
And in general, older, I, I like all the changes. The ultimate change is great. Trademark change is great. Uh, the chamber will have to be like more planted on site. But because of those changes to trademark, we're also going to most likely see a, um, a change in chambers using the trap as an angle checker. Because you're going to be able to recall it. So you basically get, let's say I'm going... Uh, let's say I'm going into a uh, bind and I'm attacking showers as a chamber, right? So I'm attacking showers as a chamber. Wait one second. I'm attacking chamber showers. And instead of just dry peeking everything, I can check this angle by sticking here. I go in, right? And now I'm just going to put my trap over here, right? I, 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 won't be, I will be even able to do that, I think, from main. So I'm putting the trap over here. If it's not get if it's if it's not getting triggered, that means that no one is in this area. So I can recall it, I can gain the space, and then dry peak this angle. And I will have back that trap in 10 seconds. Uh, sorry, in 20 seconds around, right? After I'm peaking this. So I can then go, wait for my teammates on short, and slowly gain the space on on showers. So I can just put I can just put the another trap in here. Somewhere like this, right? So I don't expose myself too much, like something like this, so I can check if someone is on the bench or on the corner. There's, there's a lot of stuff like that that is going to affect the way that you're going to play, specifically if there's going to be a second sentinel of the team, like a Cypher or a, chain, uh, cypher or a Killjoy. I know the, uh, the cooldown is 30 seconds, but for the time before you recall and check like angles and so on, 10 seconds are going gonna, are gonna, uh, gonna to pass. That is time-consuming, but this is also how Killjoys were playing. If you play default, you have all the time in the world. You know? So, there's a lot of changes here. Alright. Um, next one. We have... Uh, what else? Do, is, it's important on Chamber. We'll have to test out the stability curve change, because that's... We, we, you should be less able to spam shots with Chamber. We'll see if that's actually the case after testing it out in the practice range. Right now, we cannot really say anything. Um, all right. And of course, the massive slow change on uh, the area. Wait, uh, there was actually a mention on the area being decreased by 30%. I don't see it here. But it was in different sources that the area of the slow was changed by 30%. So not only it's, it's smaller, but also the duration is, is smaller as well. Very weird. Um, okay, we'll see. Maybe it's not gonna be in the official patch. We'll see how it goes. Now, Cypher, all, all of the Sentinel's utility, so tripwires, um, nanosomes, actually, not only Sentinel's utility, but also like um, Sova's Arrow, Chaos Dagger, um, the trademark from, from Chamber, and so on, all of that utility will now have 20 HP instead of 1. That's a huge change for a lot of stuff, because now mollies were going to be able to destroy it, but also has an implication that, for example, Sova's Shock Dart, who's dealing 15 damage of the outskirts of its area, is not going to be able to clear everything that it hits, because it can deal 15 to a tripwire or a pizza uh, chamber trap, and it might not destroy it. So the lineups that were like very area-efficient most likely gonna have to be changed, which is very awkward for Sova. So it's kind of like a small Sova, very specific pro play aimed um, change that will be a small nerf for Sova. It's kind of funny. Uh, Prowler got nerfed to 60 HP, which is a good change. I think that that thing had insane amount of HP for, for pistol rounds. And if you take into consideration that a Fade could have gone for two of those in pistol round... A revealing area... It was pretty tough. It was pretty tough to, like, fight against this because you didn't even have enough bullets to kill, you know, typically. So, this is a good change for the game. For full buy rounds, almost change, changes nothing. It's two bullets, though, from Phantom instead of... Uh, well, actually, for Phantom... No, it's, it, it changes one bullet. So, for rifles, it's not that big of a change, but for pistols, it's insane change. Habo has uh, finally his high tide for duration of 15 seconds. I'm guessing this doesn't change up the wind up of the duration. So it's still going to have those three seconds wind up. 
on when you put it down, which is super slow and you have to be so much aware of it that it, there's, there's, it takes literally three seconds for the wall to go up. Uh, but the duration at least is going to be 15 seconds. That means that you're going to have an impression that you're going to get the wall back faster. But the reality is just the wall is longer up. So the cooldown just gets three seconds shorter, essentially. Um, cascade duration from five to seven. At five, I, I actually realized it was very low amount, but I didn't realize it was just five seconds. That's ridiculous. At, se at seven seconds, it's more reliable. But it's almost... It, cascade... Right? Habo's only one skill that he had, right? Because it had one charge, had almost the same duration as a jet smoke. Like, that's kind of crazy when you think about it. So, and it's so much more constrained than, than a jet smoke. Uh, so, seven seconds is very much needed. Now we have also two, uh, two charges of that. So, that's a, that's a bit of a change. But still, doesn't change the fundamental issue with Chamber, which is... His entire kit, apart from the ultimate, does the same thing. And unfortunately, because of that, he's very one-dimensional. He's very good for retakes. He's very good for attack. But he's not a good anchor. And that limits his possibilities of being used as a, as a main smoker. And I don't think he will be able to be used as a main smoker because he's also unreliable. Because the player that plays Harbour has to be so, like, skilled with this agent because you need to be super precise with the way that you throw your smoke and super precise the way that you throw your high tide. It's, I, I think Harbo has a very high skill ceiling, but it's also a, a lot of um, room to make errors and because of that, he's probably not going to be played a lot. Now, Keio... Again, zero point change to 20 HP. Probably with this one will not matter that much because you just shoot with it and typically deal more than 20 damage, but it does change for the wall banks. So we'll have to test it out in the game. Ultimate points to increase from 7 to 8. Again, at the end of all the changes to the characters, I'm going to touch about the dynamic between duelists and uh, the rest because it, there seems to be a bit of a disconnect. We're going to touch this later a little bit. Lockdown health increase from 150 to 200 we're gonna talk about this change when we're gonna go down to damage multipliers so let's just remember that the there's a buff on the health increase on the lockdown because that's not only one thing that actually buffs this ultimate nanosome same thing as a tripwires 20 hp might not get destroyed by a silver shock dart if it's on the outskirt of the shock dart paranoia huge buff towards omens insane buff towards omen because right now you're gonna be, uh, sorry, not right now, but in the future, in a few days, you're gonna be able to, on pistol round, buy yourself a paranoia, two smokes, and an armor. That is insane amount of util for a character like Omen for a pistol round. That is absolutely nuts. And uh, he, he will be able to anchor a site, be super efficient at, defend, at defending it because he, you, has the, you have the paranoia when they're committing and you're able to buy time because you're able to buy two smokes, so you can instantly use two smokes at the beginning of the round, create space, right, uh, for your teammates, do some one-ways, and you get your smokes back at, in, in just measly 30 seconds. So it's a great change for Omen, huge change, huge change. And it also saves you a little bit of credits over time, because well, think about it this way, right? We have um, a 13... Nine game, um, typically, on average. That is 22 rounds, right? In those 22 rounds, you want to buy and use Paranoia in all of them. Let's assume that you're going to use it in 20 rounds. 20 rounds, that's 1k credits. Oh, that's too much. <laughs> It'll be 1 million. But it's, it's 1k credits that you saved with just this little change that allows you to buy one more shield or one more sheriff or a stinger over the course of the entire game. That is actually huge when you think about it in a 13-9 game, right? Um, Phoenix has a small cost increase, a decrease in the wall, which is amazing because the wall was too expensive. And now you're also going to be able to buy one flash, a wall, 
in a Kevlar on pistol round. And I don't hate this. I actually do think the classic is pretty good. And if you're just a semi-tank on pistol round with a wall and a one flash, you can create a lot of space for your teammates on pistol round. So this is pretty good. Boombot, same change as the Fate Prowler. Very good change. Boombot was annoying as hell in pistol rounds. Very good change. Blast, uh, blast pack, health pack, increase to 20. Um, doesn't matter. Sage. That's a huge change. And for me, it's kind of weird because at this point, I would just not allow Sage to even heal herself. From a, like a solo queue standpoint. For pro play, this change is fine. But for solo queue play, you're still gonna see sages who are gonna prioritize self-heal in instead of healing teammates, even though the difference is night and day. It's 30 towards, 800, uh, towards 100, right? But at this point, maybe she should just not be allowed to heal herself. And maybe buff the heal even more to like be like super fast or something like that, right? Because it it's gonna it's gonna be creating a lot of animosity in, in ranked. But I know those changes are not for ranked. And the fortify delay on the barrier orb allows it to the wall to be faster destroyed on pistol round. 300 milliseconds is a huge change. You might think it's not much. But once you see it in game, you're gonna be able to destroy the sage wall with two people with the pistols like very fast. Something that wasn't happening before because the wall was literally fortifying to maximum amount of those 500 HP during the moment when you're running out of ammo. Um, then we have Sovarican Arrow, same change, nothing important. Trailblazer cost increased from 250 to 300. I don't mind this because you transfer this 50 towards Regrowth, which was too expensive in my eyes. So this is a good change. Trailblazer is an insanely powerful uh, piece of utility. So I like this change. Uh, Viper Spit. This is, uh, thank God I'm not playing Viper anymore because I would, I would, this is like the, the, for me in solo queue, I found it, you know, the pressure video. If you didn't watch the pressure video, you should rewatch the pressure video. Uh, so, sorry, not rewatch, but you should watch the pressure video that I release on my YouTube channel and guides because that was the main reason why I stopped playing Viper. But if that didn't make me uh, swap from the Viper, this would. The ult in the first place is not that impactful because it's the only ult in the game that you can just literally ignore. Like, you can just not do anything about it. You can just leave it. And the Viper is like, well, fine. Fantastic. Now with the eight orbs, not only you're gonna have... It's gonna be so tough to get the ultimate online because as a, it, as a Viper who does her job... On defense, you're not getting kills. You're playing retake, typically. So you're going to save a lot. You're going to not get kills. You're going to have most likely a negative scoreline, right? Unless you're nuts. So um, it, it's going to be pretty punishing for Vipers. And also, you're going to be less able to play around your, your ultimate, which is a huge aspect of her because of the changes of the integrity, regeneration time, and how long can you be outside of the ultimate? Huge change. Huge change, and it's gonna be... Uh, it's, it's very limiting to Vipers. So, rip Vipers, I guess. You know? Uh, it's, it's pretty tough. It's pretty tough. Like, this, this is... From 7 to 8 is a huge change. It's a huge, huge, huge change. It's gonna be even more important to remember as a Viper now to drop down your ult and trying to get kills or, or dying to get an additional orb so you unnerf the ultimate, you know? In that one round. Yoru got buffed somehow. Not only we got saved from, from nerfs, I mean, apart from gate crash, but it's aligned with the other pieces of utility, so it doesn't matter that much, and people typically don't shoot the Yoru TP. That, that doesn't matter much, right? But we got the buff of the gate crash costing, costing 150. Same case as with, uh, with the paranoia for a moment. This is one additional stinger per game. I'm pretty happy about that. You know? Like, I'm pretty happy about that. Question about when integrity regen time. So you have fuel 
when the ultimate is up from Viper, if you go out of it, you lose the fuel, right? And when you're going back to the ultimate, the fuel is refueling to maximum in five seconds. Now it's going to take five times longer than that. All right. Gameplay system updates. Now, this is a something that was very much needed. I was actually speaking to Raisu about um, the assist system being broken for a very long time. I realized that when I started playing Breach more, and because I didn't play flashing characters before, right? And there was huge amount of issues with assist. That's why I also think that cast system is really bad. Because not only in, in Valorant you can get assist for using something that wasn't really that impactful, but also they were just broken. So the cast value that, peop that, that people have seen in stats in VLR or in RIPGG was just wrong and also misleading. That's why I also hate cast. So it's a terrible stat. Um, and in general, now you'll be able to gonna get more assists by using the utility, which will essentially buff ACS of players that are able to concuss, nearsight, detain, smoke, slow, and suppress, right? But it also buffs ACS of um, duelists because they can all flash and like, you know, Reyna goes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. instantly destroyed, doesn't matter, we still got to still got assist, you know? So... You get 25 SCS in that round. Woo! -hoo. Anyway, in general, it's a good way because, like, you need the grace period to be longer than that. Because when you concuss or you near sight or, or you do something with an opposing player, it typically means that he is not able to relocate or is relocated instantly, and that allows you to get an assist for the piece of utility that you use for someone else, which is very important to keep like the, the support players at least seeing that something is being done, you know? Now, the damage interaction updates are very interesting. Abilities that output damage will now universally damage enemy objects that can be damaged. Exceptions are made for Scar, Trailblazer, and Cypher Trapoid that only deal damage to players. Understandable. We want to ensure that the ability is interacting in a consistent manner across the board. We want you to spend time thinking about how our approach utility in game rather than wondering if you can do it in the first place. Very good change. It was very confusing in the past to know, for example, if your aftershock. I'm not sure if you guys remember, but when I started playing Breach, aftershock was not destroying traps. It was not destroying nano swarms. It was not destroying um, uh, trip wires as well. Uh, it was not destroying anything essentially so i spent a lot of time nagging raisu about that like I, I wanted to aftershock to delete that stuff because that would be such a so nice such a nice quality of life upgrade for breach they changed that after the time and now we have a unification of that it's very important we're gonna have to check in the actual custom map how big of a leeway um there is for mollies to deal damage because you guys remember that Cypher, right, puts the wall um, on, a, on a spot that is like eye level, right? So when you have a wall, the tripwire is typically on eye level of a character, right? Like when you crouch. When you crouch, it's on eye level when you're putting up this, this Cypher trap. And I'm wondering if there will be a molly underneath it Will this level actually affect the tripwire? If it will, that's a huge change. Because now, snake bites, um, nanoswarms, uh, brimstone molly, um, all of that will be able to destroy typical tripwires. So, it's going to be a huge change, something that we have to test out in a custom map. It's, it, it, we cannot really judge those changes completely without testing it out. But it's a huge change because now not only Cypher, sorry, not only um, Breach with the Aftershock or Sova with the Shock Dots are able to destroy trips and traps. And by the way, I was just before this was announced, I was so close of creating uh, Sova lineups to, to help clearing. Like, for example, when we go to Ascend, like, you know, Chamber Trap is always here. 
I just wanted to do a lineup for Sovas from here, here, and here to put a shock dot every single round and just and just just give it to the community. But now it's not that really that important because everyone will be able to do that. Actually, maybe it's even more important because we should create lineups for every single character. But when you play a character that is able to destroy now traps, you should probably prepare lineups that are going to help with that. So, for example, on market, when, you, when you're going to have a chamber and there's going to be a trap on market, you want to have a lineup for your snake bite there at the beginning on, on, the, on the round, you know? Like, you want to use that because you have two nano swarms, right? And you can clear a, a, a trap at the beginning of the round. It's crazy, right? So, there's, there's a lot of new dynamic. Specifically for pro play, this means a lot because it will not occupy the Sova to use the shock dart at the beginning of the round. Instead, he can go instantly for the drone or the arrow and you will not waste those few seconds because someone else will be able to do that for you. You know? So, uh, there's going to be a lot of changes here. And that's fantastic. You know? And those changes for, like, um, they matter for nanoswarms, alarmabot, lockdowns, uh, trap wire, um, the blast specs, not really. Doesn't matter for Recon Bolt or Leer because Reyna would have to put it on the ground to be destroyed by, by a nano, by, by a Maoli. I mean, I guess with the amount of random shit that we see in, in, in Valorant rank that will be happening from time to time, but should never happen in the first place. Barrier Orb can also be now destroyed by Utility, which is also very nice, right? Um, and uh, yeah, I, I'm assuming that the Prowlers will actually get full damage from the Mollies, which means that a Brimstone Molly will counter a Freight Prowler, because a Brimstone Molly deals, if I'm not mistaken, I was counting it, but I might be wrong, some people say it's 60 DPS, I was certain it's 55.5, but that means that a fade going through a brimstone, ult uh, brimstone molly, if it doesn't go in the exact corner, it will get destroyed by it. You know, so we'll see. We, that's something that we have to test out as well. And now Orbital Strike also can destroy the Rendezvous. Nice. You know? Mm. No, no, no. Not counter fade ult. Fade, fade um, prowler. Just the prowler. Right? Um, and the same applies to Phoenix with the hot change. Blaze can also now damage like tripwires. That's another thing that we have to change. I'm assuming that the f firewall from Cypher can only destroy is from from Phoenix and only destroy this this um for example a tripwire trapwire if it goes through the base of the trapwire and not just the laser because that otherwise would be broken. Um, so there's probably some range of it like. One meter range or something like that. But we'll see. Another thing to test out. You know? Um, KNO has a voice over that tells you the align of number suppressed, which is nice. Nice quality of change. Uh, zero point of damage is prowless, which is also nice. Um, wait, this is... Fragment is... This is the other way around. A zero point should tell you the info and fragment should damage the fake prowlers. You don't want the dagger to damage the prowler. Um, so that's the other way around. Now, Killjoy has also the same changes with the Nanosome. Again, we're going to have to test it out in, in, the, in the customs, but it's super important. She is less capable of doing lineups to destroy, like, you know, stuff like this, because she, the, her range is like a Viper Orb and is not as flexible as a Snake Bite or a Shock Dart, but it is possible, so we'll see. Um... Blast packs now damage prowlers. Doesn't really matter that much because if you're able to satchel a prowler, that means he's close to you anyway. Painters can also damage a prowler. I actually didn't know that that wasn't possible before. That's a huge change. Um, Sova also couldn't damage a prowler. That's crazy, man. The fact that Sova couldn't damage a prowler was crazy. Also, there's like unless you have your arrow already in your hands, there's no point in shooting the prowler because it's just two bullets from a vandal or something. But yeah, uh, Hunter's Fury destroys um, rendezvous. Important because remember, if a chamber chambers rendezvous, rendezvous gets destroyed, he doesn't get it back for the entirety of the round, right? And also, you can just catch him off in a stupid angle because of that. Uh, snake bite. 
uh, well, explained this already. And now this is a huge change. Damage multiplier updates. Right? The damage multiplier updates, like this is something that was so obscure for so many players. I was testing it out because when they changed the aftershock, my suspicions were confirmed that some utility deals more damage to environment. Because, you know, Aftershock was, de was destroying the Killjoy Lockdown, but then they changed the Aftershock to deal 3 times 60 but only one explosion from the Aftershock was enough to deal 150 damage to a Killjoy Lockdown. So something was not correct. And that made me certain that there's a multiplier for environment. And as you can see, it was 250 for the Aftershock. I actually, I knew that Blast Pack has a crazy multiplier, but I didn't know that it was 1.2k. Uh, that was nuts. And also, like, it was crazy to me that so many raises never used the satchel, waited a second, and then just exploded it on, on the Sage Wall. Instead, they were, they were shooting the, the box of the, of the Sage Wall to destroy the box of that Sage Wall, so when it explodes... That box, that one part of the wall, it explodes the satchel. So it's like literally was counterproductive. It was crazy. I even seen Nukia, Nukia doing that in pro play like a few times. It was crazy. But but yeah. So what now the few changes. For example, Brimstone Molly doesn't deal 100 damage now to environment, only deals 50%. Now I've seen Brimstone mains spreading some false propaganda about them not being able to destroy the Killjoy Lockdown anymore, which is not correct, because the Brimstone's Incendiary is 8 seconds long. It deals 55.5 DPS, I think, or 60. Doesn't matter. It's minimum this amount, right? If you multiply that by itself, and then you divide it by 2, that is 222 damage, and Lockdown has 200 HP now on the new, on the new patch. That means that Incendiary alone, the Brimstone Molly, will be able to destroy the Lockdown. And remember that Mollies go through walls. Right? So you're able to counter unless they, uh, unless they changed it. But I don't think they did. You can just do this. You standing lane and you do... Plop. You know? Now, there's no damage drop off for the, um, for the Brimstone Incendiary. Let's see if they change this, but it was possible to put Molly's through the wall if you just put it on the lane and it just goes through. So we'll see if they change that. But in general, like, Aftershock is now not able to destroy um, the Killjoy Lockdown, so you need another piece of utility, but Brimstone can. Which is kind of funny. You know? Um, and Ko, if I'm not mistaken, is able to if he lands the um, fragment almost in the middle of it. Because from what I remember when I checked it, it's 70 damage and it's 4 explosions. Um, so he would need to get 3 direct hits. But we'll have to check with the second circle. And I think with the second circle, he might not be able to deal 200 damage. But we have to check. You know? We are gonna have to check. Unless they changed it, like, maybe, because in the past, in the previous patch, the damage from to environment was not affected by the distance of the, from the center of the fragment, but I'm assuming that they updated that to be fully clear on how much damage it deals. We'll see if that will be the case or not. Something that we have to check. All right. So we'll have to check if the outskirt of the KO grenade can still destroy a Killjoy ultimate. I'm worried that it might not, but we'll see. Um, Phoenix Hot Hands deals 50% of the damage. Now, this one definitely doesn't have enough damage to destroy Killjoy Lockdown because it's 200 HP and Phoenix Hot Hand is 4 seconds if I'm not mistaken. It's 
it's gonna be around like 150 damage to kill J Lockdown, if I'm not mistaken. But again, we have to check it in the practice range. I didn't do the maths on this one. Um, Blast Pack still deals a lot of damage, 250, but it has to um, arm itself. And I think you need to do two pain shells to destroy the um, the killer lockdown. I do wonder if they change the arming mechanic in this patch. So we'll, I, again, another thing that we have to change. And then um, pain shells now deal more damage to non-players, and Boombo deals more damage to non-players because if this wouldn't be changed, then Raze would have to do a direct hit on the killjoy lockdown to destroy it. Now it doesn't have to be direct. Wait, 55? Wait. You can destroy Killjoy's Lockdown just with the first explosion now. Essentially. Because it's 55 damage. When you multi... No, 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 sorry, sorry. My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. Never mind. Ne never mind. 55, right? It's a long day. 55 times 250%. It's 157.5. So that's going to be the first explosion. And it's gonna, you're still going to have to deal the missing 62.5 damage for the lockdown. But that's going to happen with the, with the remains, with the, with the shrapnels, whatever you call it. All right. Um, Viper Snakebite deals 50% damage to non-players, which is ridiculous because you're not going to be able to destroy Kildra's lockdown even with two snake bites. Because it's 132. That means you're going to be dealing, dealing 66 damage <laughs> per snake bite. And that is. <laughs> so you're just going to you're just going to deal 132 damage to lockdown. You know? So yeah. Um, and abilities cannot damage now allied stuff like rendezvous trademarks by cam this is, oh, this is all good changes this is all good changes this is all good changes and i like those um but this one is actually interesting so owl drone will not be destroyed by allied damage so you can go for for example you can drone through your brimstone's ultimate very niche stuff but you can do that now you know you can do that now uh weapons update the Spectre, um, I guess it receives a small buff in the up-close range, because the 15 meters was very, very low, uh, I agree. And you were feeling that that's why I was saying so much about the, the ADS, because over 15 meters there was damage drop-off, and you wanted to maintain precision instead of fire rate, because the damage was so low, so much lower on the above 15 meters. Right, so I was preferring to ADS with the Spectre over 15 meters. But now, I think it's actually fine to left-click till 20 meters because the fire rate is going to be more important, but over 20 meters, you're definitely going to need to ADS like before. But in general, it, this change... Oh, wait, there's the other way around. What I'm talking about? Yeah, it's a long day. It, I'm, I'm, oh my god, it's the other way around. Woo! Delete the VOD! Anyway, so yeah, just the other way around what I just explained. You're going to have to ADS over 15 meters, not over 20. Although I did, would, I did prefer to ADS over 15 meters anyway. So, doesn't matter much. You need to ADS more now with the gun. You know? Anyway, really, I, I feel like I, I'm happy that they didn't change Stinger. But Spectre is like... Yeah, this is a nerf. This is definitely a nerf. This is definitely a nerf. And I didn't like Sting uh, Spectre before, so it's definitely a huge nerf. Right? So I'm not, I'm not using it anymore anyway. So it's a buff to me because I'm using Stinger. For everyone else who uses Spectre, this is a huge, a huge nerf, and it's going to be a huge change against even classics. Like, against an eco, when players just whiff because they left-click without ADSing, classic will deal much more damage than the Spectre. In this, uh, like, it's gonna be crazy. Um, bug fixes. The only thing that really matters here is uh, the boom bot will not explode on con contact with Euro's gate crash, something that I reported a few months ago and is now fixed, so you can't really abuse it. And now, at the end of the video, one thing that I really would like to talk about is the change of the ultimate costs. The ultimate costs 
is creating a very weird like with the viper with the with the fade with the ko with the breach and now all of that ultimate goes from seven to eight and you can also see the same trend with like sage being pushed to heal your teammates so what they're trying to what, they, what riot tries to achieve here with this change is that they want the support players to support their duelists right the the, the players that will go onto site and be more they're more self-efficient right by this design as well but they try to punish the support players by weakening the the utility so that it's more helpful for someone else than themselves right and the problem is that this might be decent for um for pro play because we have seen that it's actually more beneficial to play just not dualist or one dualist if you need mobility and just focus on the agents that have a lot of utility because it's so important on the pro level but i feel like those changes are tailored towards ranked more which is weird right i mean it's not exactly because i understand the ultimate nerf because riot feels like in a in a best of 13 sorry in a, in a, in a mr 13 they don't want many runs being decided too many runs being decided by the ults so i get that that change but at the same time it's like a nerf for everyone who doesn't play a duelist in ranked i sneezed but i managed to mute myself so there's like a less incentive for prop uh, for sorry for ranked players to play something that is not a duelist so there's gonna be a huge dissonance between the pro level pro gameplay and ranked play even though there's a huge dissonance between those two already right and one of the reasons why i stopped playing viper is because my utility became worse and worse over time so i couldn't play for myself i couldn't use it to 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 what i wanted to achieve and it's it's more tailored towards other teammates and because of that i felt that i need to have more agency in my hand to win more games in ranked and that's why i swapped to yoru because it has so much utility that i can use for myself including a pocket teammate that i can trade in form of the clown which is so useful because my uh, my clown is a better teammate than most of the teammates i have in mortal 3 it's insanely funny but the point is there's not much incentive right now to play um to play non-dualists after this change uh in in ranked and the only character i guess who will feel better with all of those changes is maybe omen because you got a buff for pistol rounds so it's actually feeling better but playing like viper playing ko like having the ultimate being like pushed to eight breach is gonna feel awful as well like you know it's it's tough it, it's tough i understand why because on pro play you also don't want to have too much utility like we had been in a point in valorant when um when valorant was a lot about util spam every single piece of utility was 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 twice as cheap right as the uh, as the utility right now that we have and instead now all of the utility is more expensive but also weaker than in the past but the for example phoenix for some reason has one of the best ults in the game still for six while sovas is for eight and it's nowhere near to the same power level so you see what i'm getting at right phoenix gets a buff yoru gets a buff right and it doesn't change like the way they played the game that much they're just getting more efficient at it while if you play sova if you play breach if you play fade if you play ko you're getting punished viper viper is just insane viper players i'm so sorry i'm so sorry guys but playing ranked as a viper right now it has to be a pain in the ass you know so yeah um we'll see how this plan pans out in general i do think riot is doing a great job at managing this game 
the chamber nerf should have come a little bit earlier, but I understand there was some, you know, esports happening and so on. But I do think that Riot is really managing this game really well. And even though I might think that they might be creating some issues right now in ranked, I did disagree with them in some decisions in the past, and I had to eat my words. Like, I thought, for example, that making the utility more expensive is a fucking huge mistake, and I was super angry, and they proved me wrong. I think the game is better when the ex utility is more expensive, and, um, and it just made the game slower a little bit, and more... Like, let's say more, it required more thinking from the players because you have to be more deliberate. And those changes that we're going to see in the game, again, will incentivize the same behavior. You're going to have to be more mindful about how you use utility. You're going to have to be more creative with it. You can be more creative because now you can destroy traps with a lot more agents. And um, in theory, chamber population decreases while Reyna population increases in ranked play and with that very positive um end of this conversation i'm gonna say hello thank you for listening or watching and hope you guys enjoyed it and i cannot wait for this patch to hit on wednesday in two days bye, -bye.